today there's there's no intention. Um, she'll be ma- offering mass for the unity of Christians and for Bartolomo, uh, who who died yesterday in Mexico. Uh, and I also wear this chasuble of Our Lady, she who is the the perfect model of the Church, and she who is there during the Church's beginning at Pentecost, united with the apostles. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves and wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down, I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrong. Hear the orphans plead. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, to the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. 
I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is a because he is righteous, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is the disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus comes not to bring peace, but the sword. I think, you know, um, a good way to think of this is, is how I explain things to our, our marriage couples when they come in, especially with sexual morality in the church. So often uh, we focus on no's. Right? The church says no to this, the church says no to that. But really, what it comes down to is, is when we say yes, to one thing, we automatically exclude others, right? When, when a young man says yes to this, to his bride, right? All other women are off the table, right? He's, he's not so much saying no to everyone else as he's saying yes to this one person. And so it is with the church, right? When we, when we say yes to Jesus, when we say yes to following his commandments and his, uh, his, his kingdom, We automatically say no to other things. We automatically say no to um, Buddhism, uh, to Confucianism. We say no to these other religions, right? We say no to hating your enemy. We say no to um, a life concerned with luxuries. We say no to a lot of things because we stand for something else. If we don't stand for anything, then there's no need for division. Right? If we don't stand for anything, then I can agree with you, I can agree with you, I can agree with anyone, and uh, we can be united in that way. But if we stand for Christ, if we, we uh, conform ourselves to his teaching, we're automatically going to say no to other things. And this might have already caused division in your life. Right? It might have caused a vision between you and a friend or even you and uh, your family member, as Jesus tells us in the gospel. There are certain things that we, that we have to hold on to, and that causes us division. But I would say today for our message, as, as brothers and sisters united in Christ, there are certainly things we have to stand for, but other things that are are not so important so as to cause division even within this body of Christ. Uh, for example, um, something as simple as wearing masks in church, right? <laughs> Father Bennett gets emails where we're not strict enough or other emails where we're too strict. You know, these little things that cause um, tensions and divisions within the body of Christ, within the church. Or something like uh, odd, odd orientum masses. Right, which way the priest faces. Does that mean I have to be uh, divisive and, and um, against which way uh, a, a different church has mass? No, I think we're all brothers and sisters, depending on, uh, uh, regardless of which way we, we look when we say mass, regardless of what the, the emphasis is in our church, whether it's uh, social outreach, whether it's prayer, 
whether, um, you know, whatever it is, whether it's catechesis. I think within the body of Christ, there are so many different facets that are all good and that are all um, in line with the teachings of Jesus. And yet sometimes we have uh, divisions even amongst ourselves as, as uh, the body of Christ. Sometimes we have division among priests and how different priests do things. Uh, but today we pray for unity. We pray, right, that just as God is one and just as he, he desires that his disciples be one, that we would um, hold fast to what we need to hold fast to as Christians, but also give exceptions, right, where, where there's leeway to be granted. And so today we, we pray for our brothers and sisters in the church. We pray for unity. Um, and we pray that uh, as this united front, right, we may uh, approach the world and preach the good news. And now we offer our prayers to our loving Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Hebda and all bishops, that they may be firm in their conviction of the truth and of the true faith uh, as we go to um, preach this faith to the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to uh, division and um, friction and jealousy. Uh, within the church, that we may all be united in the bond of love, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated life, and holy marriages, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the men and women in our armed forces, we pray for those who uh, build up the common good, our, our police officers, firefighters, um, first responders that they may be protected both physically and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. We pray for unity within this nation, uh, for peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the poor, the sick, the suffering, the lonely and the homebound, that they may know of the compassion of the heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the souls of the faithful departed, that they may rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. And now we take some time to offer to God the silent petitions of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God our Father, just as you are one with the Son and the Holy Spirit, grant we pray the grace that your church may be one united in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit upon all the nations, so that in a wondrous manner he might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Stephen, with St. Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.